For a long moment, Act 3, after the curtain had fallen and Aramis had started, the six elements and their guests just stared at each other awkwardly. Then Dinky poked her head from out her mother's swing and asked tentatively, mm -hmm. Yes, Dinky? replied Dizzy curiously. Dinky's tongue was perfectly balanced between worry and help. You're not actually a shampoo, aren't you? All 13 ponies burst to the ladder. Two acts of accumulated tension, stress, and bewilderment were converted by some impossible alchemy into mirth, and they laughed until their sides ache and their breath came short. I can confirm she is not, little Dinky, said Princess Luna, tossing off another round of gar gar giggles. Hey, raindrops, asked Shirley, deliberately pitching her voice in overdone imitation of seductive. Mind telling me exactly what a pig as a stallion can do with his wings? Or are you going to leave it to my imagination? After the third round of giggles, they made a game with it. One after another, poking, and yes, Pokey Pierce pointed out the pun, fun at various features of the play, reveling in Charles' laughter, until her mirth was eventually cut short by the announcer proclaiming the third act of the play was about to begin. I still think the episode would have, that whole episode would have been better if we'd done it this way. I also think uh, maybe another big reason why it would have been better to do it this way. Because while Animaniacs works because they know how to make fun of dorks. And while Tiny Toons can make it work, it especially works considering the fact that Babs's actress, Trace McNeil, was actually stalked in real life. So they do know about certain annoying fans and what to properly do with them, i.e. bass the living shit out of them. But with MLP, that doesn't work nearly as well because a lot of fans are more sensitive. Not only that, but it doesn't work as well in this universe. Making it into a play like this makes it work a little bit better because then we could just make it silly. Guess in a weird way, Brian and Michael kind of understood that and that's why Ember Island players worked as well as it did. Because they knew... That you couldn't exactly do what M.A. X. Tiny Toons and Simpsons does to their more moronic fans versus others. As the curtain rose on the stage, elements were tried through Everfree, coming up on the stream. The strange voices began to sing all too familiar ly lyrics. Come on in, the water. Oh, please, oh, please, don't decline. Come and dance on the river's bed. Come on in and join the dead. Well, you did it, purr of that one. Thank you. Five of the stage elements were now doing their best on pony presents, but stage Lyra seemed more resistant to the song. You shan't snare me that easily, whoever you are, she declared. Now I'll let you treacherous singer and trouble my friends no more. She drew her hoof across her lyre, and a burst of cacophony emerged. Notes ground against notes in a teeth jarring class that tore into hypnotic song. Lyra threw her hose over her ears, though she made a mental note to technique. That kind of burst of count cockney might just be the thing next time she needed to break a spell of her song magic. Bards, man! Freaking bards! What stepped out from behind the trees across the stream were definitely not the sirens the real Lyra had been expecting, nor for that matter were they ponies. To nine of the twelve guests, the three strange creatures now taking stage were wholly unknown. But for Lyra, Bamba, and Trixie, these creatures were all too familiar. Though their oddly safe dresses concealed something of their forms, these were unmistakably the bizarre creatures known as Hominins. The three had pale blue skin, shovel shaped lyred in Trixie's coat, and a mane of straight dark white and blue. The second had a mane as the same color as Carrot Top's coat, and a pale of pale gold. And the third has striped purple green mane and plum color skin. Wow. I said your girls don't show up much for the show, and you've made two appearances straight in two different fix. Good job! Who are you? I asked Lyra. 
I am Arya Blaze, proclaimed the one with the purple and green mane. I am Adazia Dazzle, declared the one with the orange mane. Hi, I'm Sadana, said the blue haired siren, humming in thingy, waving one paw tearfully. We are the sirens. Strife is our wine and war are our meat, said, said Arya. Adazio said, The Queen Corona has set us guard on a path to the elements, said Adazio. It promised us lots of tacos, said Sonata, in a tone that sounded more like Pinkie Pie than a quasi mystical creature of Everfree. What? blurted out says Lyra, for once perfectly reflecting the real Lyra's feelings. Tacos! repeated Sonata. I think it's the most wonderful thing ever. You didn't have those back when we were last poking around your civilization. Arya faced hoof. Pa, Sonata, will you please shut up about the stupid tacos? We have intruders on our hands! As one, the three siren hominids begin to glow and rise up above stage, shimmering fin like wings unfurled from their shoulders, and begin to hum in low monotone. Arya began to sing Your will is ours. You cannot do but as we sing. Cannot do but as we sing. All is ours. Shimmering tendrils in light of purple, orange, and pale blue extended from the siren's chest, directed towards the stage elements. Before they could make contact, stage Lyra came in. Her song merged perfectly into the tune of the siren's chant, making it so they were singing alternate verses of the same song. Luna's my shepherd, I will not want. She makes me light, she's green, she laid of me the quiet waters by. Lyra glanced off the scene, but Luna's face was consistently ne neutral. Lyra wondered idly how many ponies in La Comedia della Luna were familiar with the 23rd Lunar Psalm. It had been composed near decades after Corona's banishment into the sun, and it had been centuries since it had been in common use. L Lyra only knew it because he spent three years studying ancient songs and ballads. Now, any pony hadn't spent hours digging through Carolina archives, he found it was more than he could guess. As Lyra sang, a silver glow fire in the air fired of her. The scientist's tendrils struck it, and their colors began to bleed into Adazio, saying, Your thoughts are ours. You cannot dream of escaping. Cannot dream of escaping. All is ours. Lyra took up her song again, and as she sang, the colors faded away, and the silver began to creep out the tendrils. My soul she does restore again. She make me walk off, make within the paths of righteousness, even for our own name's sake. Then Sonata began to sing. The real Lyra was her surrender laugh her scream. Our, your tacos are ours. We shall feast on yummy goodness. Feast on yummy goodness. All is ours. Sonata! His Daria. What? replied Sonata in stage whisper. The siren's magic sputters. Her song was disrupted. And before they could recover, Stace Lyra had started their next verse. Yea, I walk neath the new named sun. Yet I fear no ill, for she is with me in her wings, and horn my comfort still. The silver simmer in front of Stace Lyra shot across the stage, and it fell to sirens at the same energy. Stace Lyra continued to sing, the sirens apparently muffled by the silver shroud. A table see a furnace, in presence of my foes. My hand seat does with oil and naught, and my cup overflows. The siren seemed to be dissolving the silvery energy that the Lunar Hymn had conjured. Their wings had faded out, and just of their manes and tips of their paws beginning to pale. Says Lyra continued to sing as the siren's disillusion accelerated. Goodness and mercy all my life shall truly follow me. Other than the moon forevermore, my dwelling place shall be. The sirens were now completely gone leaving only a silvery shimmer that faded away to nothingness as Stays Lyra ended her song. The other five elements blinked and shook their heads as they came out of the trance. Mother Moore, you saved me! Stays Trixie galloped across the stage to plant a kiss on Stays Lyra, and the two unicorns embraced. By the real Lyra's side, her bonbon groaned, and Lyra gave her love a reassuring squeeze. Where in Luna's name did this come from? She whispered to Bon Bon. I mean, why turn a perfectly respectable set of fleshy monsters into these taco says dancing bears? Bon Bon gave Lyra a quizzical look. What? whispered Lyra. Look, I'm not saying the sirens were evil, but they weren't that bad. 
They weren't hominids or obsessed with tacos. No, they actually were pretty decent conversationalists. At least they, they got tired of talking and tried to sing us into the river. The stage now showed what Dizzy recognized as the room where the elements of harmony had been kept in the castle of the two sisters. Sure enough, the five great stone orbs of the inert elements lay in the center of the room, and a hooded and robed figure stood next to them, staff in one hoof. The stage six came across and stage and came to a halt facing the mysterious figure. Hoot and avoid ye trespasses! The figure threw back his hood, feeling a striped head and mane. I am Sakura, servant of the sun. At long last, my sorcery has freed Queen Corona from a drought's fire, and I set up a vitti to reverse my workings. In case you miss, said Sage Trixie, there's six of us and only one of you. How exactly do you propose to stop us? Ah, but I am not alone, proclaimed Sage Sakura. Spike go forth! A series of a massive dragon state construct of cloth, and judging from the way it was moving, a wooden frame lumbered onto the stage. Dizzy felt her muffin vibrating with glee against her side as her stage doppelganger charged forward. Something sharp and shiny flashed at the end of her wings as he slashed at stage Sakura, who blocked the blur of staff strokes. Meanwhile, stage Ray tries to take it to the air and with a bell of RADRAL SMASH! Bucked the stage spike in the head. The full dragon warned and strike down but missed. There was a flash of Stage Carrot Top shot Stage Spike with a blast of laser vision. Stage Spike retaliated while instead of fleeing, the Stage Carrot Top died the way out. Stage Sakura looked backwards and intoned, Pegasus Repellent! A wave of green light shot from her staff and sent Stage Stitsy flying back. Before she recovered, Stage Sakura struck the ground with her staff and shouted, Creepus Corollis! A half dozen giant spires popped into existence. Almost immediately cut down by Stage Sissy's wing blades and Stage Caratop's laser vision. The fight continued and smudged this faster for some minutes, while Stage Sissy chasing Stage Sakura back and forth across the stage, while the latter sounded out random nonsense spells, which summoned everything from Jets of Green Flame to Giant Bugs. At the same time, Stage Sp to brawl with Stage Raindrops and Stage Caratop. A particular fist's buck sent him staggering off stage, and Stage Sakura was pinned down shortly thereafter. Wait a minute, said Stace Jesse, starting off a Stace of Cora from about wings of breath away. Why are you smiling? Because I have won and thou hast lost. I sent a warning up to my queen before thou entered this room and... The stage fans an explosive light as Stace of Cora fans her sentence. She hath arrived. When the flare died down, Stace Corona was standing in the center of the stage, wreathed in crackling fires of her son. The six heroes were pinned down by the tyrant sun blazing golden field, and Stace Sakura stood proudly by the stage side. What man does a sea see, traitors and fools? Did I not ward the Tetris cross? Even if memories of me were lost, for your kids' sake, thou sir, kept the rules. But behold my mercy, thy town I'll spare. Even among hostages I'll not yet slay. Of course you shall die as you fought today. But first an older treason I'll answer. At that point, Stace Corona raised one hoof and stopped it on the ground. And there was a terrible crashing noise, and the elements spattered. Sparks of magic and various colors of the rainbow rising from their broken forms. Stace Corona spoke, continued her speech. Thou shalt die first, criminal son! She said, indicating Stace cheerily with one hoof. It's you shall! You throw back! For a few moments, silent reigns over the theater. Stace Corona's fiery aura flickered. Tracy was stunned. How long ago this name had double dashed knowing exactly what Charlie had said that day? I beg thy minuscule pardon, Stage Coron demanded, evidently too flustered to speak in rhyme. You! Charlie shot, eyes wide as he stepped forward. It's you! No pony has used thou or thee or thy in hundreds of years, and it shall, no matter the subject. I don't care if, I've been, if you've been locked up in the sun for a thousand years. You said Luna would be able to watch Equestria, so I can assume you could, too. How could you not know how to speak Equestrian? Stage Corona's fires flashed and flared. Mr. Solar Fires laying up the theater brilliantly. My command of the song far surpasses thy own Mangle song! See, so he could Stage early laughed. <laughs> command of so the their lips. Well, Raindrops here said I'm out of practice. Maybe you could show me some of your command? 
Stays Carano's feel winked out. Laying the six jumped to their hooves. So he didn't seem to have noticed. I th out there Yeah I'm dead yeah I do. Tart really proclaimed. I'm dead anyway, so why not? I'm gonna die laughing and I'm gonna die making every pony else laugh. <sighs> How ridiculous you are There's explosive laughter and every tone of variation of voice imaginable. Pony laughs, the deeper for boons of the buffalo, the high pitched streaks of Griffin Mirth. Even what Lyra was dead certain was supposed to be the barks of an amused turnover. Echoed into the theater. A slight blue light fell cheerily. No! Screams Ray's Corona. He erupted from her horn. Stays Lyra dived in front of it. With a sound like a cord, biggest Lyra firebolt deflected off the crimson halo that now surrounded Stace Lyra. What's going on? The elements are seeking out new vessels, said Stace Lyra. Above the bell like chimes that accompany a purplish halo surrounding Stace's carrot top. Oh, said Stace Raydrops. Raydrops think Raydrops honesty. And with a voice, a noise like a booming of a vast drum, Orion's energy surrounded Raindrops. How in Luna's name are you ending up with kindness? asked Stace Shirley of Stace Sitsy. Kindness isn't a weakness, replied Stace Sitsy, as he's surrounded by emerald light and piping of flutes. Bring justice to criminals is to show kindness to all the they would have or would victimize. Five out of six in truth have now blessed thee, said Stace Corona, evidently attained to regain control of her situation. But without magic, thou cannot withstand me. Magic? Stace Trixie laughed, as did Stace Lee. The sixth element is magic? Of course, Stace Corona proclaimed. All the other elements are useless without magic. It is power. Who but the powerful can afford to be caring or giving? Who but the powerful can expect the seriousness or faithfulness for those they surround themselves by? Who but the powerful can waste their days in comfort and joy? You know, says Sadie Trixie, my kitty mark is for magic. But not just magic. It's doing magic for others. My destiny, my deepest purpose, is to use magic to bring together and build up ponies. You are wrong, Corona. Power is not magic. Friendship is magic! As if on cue, there was a sound of a blast of temperance, and a lavender halo formed around Sage Trixie. Corona, the tyrant's son! Hear now the desert of harmony! Boned a deep voice that didn't seem to belong to any pony. You have embraced your losing in yourself and foisted it on others! A beam of orange light shot out around Sage Raindrops to envelop Corona, tearing at her firing order. You have sought not only to hoard what is yours, but to cross out to yourself what was not! The orange bean was joined by Indigo from Stace's carrot top. You have broken faith of your sister and your people! Stace Lyra's red was added to the mix. You have brought naught but pain and suffering! Stace Dizzy flared her wings and screamed joined the glowing rainbow. You sought to stomp off birth and joy with your petty laws! Stace Shirley's blue was added. For all these cries, Harry tells you you're guilty! And Sage Trixie's lavender was added. Sage Corona was now wholly visible inside the rainbow tornado. But it's not our place to pass sentence! No! That right belongs to another! A ruler who has ruled in honesty and kindness! Who has displayed loyalty and generosity towards her people! Who has fostered laughter and friendship whenever she ruled! There was a chimmer of prismatic light, and a couple of huge alicorn appeared in the elements of in Stace Corona. Princess Luna Equestrius! Proclaimed what was apparently supposedly the voice of harmony. Your sister's fate is in your hooves. This night, Trixie had seen La Comoda de Luna's special effects and costuming crews accomplish many feats of legendarian that even she had to marvel at. But what they've done now was quite possibly the most impressive of all. The man to make Corona, the tyrant's son, the mayor all Equestria had lived in mortal terror for a thousand years, looked cute. The impression of Corona's deep power form was barely bigger than a filly, and sporting a candy pink mane and tail. The former cut into a kind of pixie bob, and Lara sort of fluffy. See, a tiny baby wings, they couldn't look, they couldn't fit in a week old foal. A stubby little horn, and a round face that someone chubby built. The only thing that ruined the impressive were her eyes. Still, the eerie blank one no longer glowed. Scout hatred on her face. 
was he spoke, Trixie noticed her voice lost its eerie echoes, reduced to a filly squeak. I hate you, Ryder. <gasps> I'm getting out my bike so she needs me. I'm in Celestia. I'm in the sun. I'm in Queen. You can let me run. Grocery is mine. It belongs to me. These mortals are weak. They help us and fail. We only see the but they will last. Their body's lives will fade like dew and grass. The monsters will come from every tail. By the way, folks, before you ask, yes, that is a joke. <laughs> Though you authors just love watching me kill my throat. Sudasia, says Stace Luna. As Stace Corona instantly fell silent as though the world struck her dumb. Celestia, repeated Stace Luna, this is your last chance. You can still turn back, and if you repent and abandon this mad quest to rule everything, you can even get back your day eventually. It needn't even take that long, as we reckon time. How in Luna's name did Double Dad think to include this part? wondered Trixie. Most of Equestria still doesn't realize that Luna is trying to redeem Celestia. No. Even some of our closest friends don't get it. How does this pony keep shifting from toy knowing things he has no right to know, and not knowing those blindingly obvious facts about us? Says Luna took a deep breath and extended one hoof. Sister, do you accept my friendship? No! Celestia said, It's my all of it! Trixie wonders, have you ever tried getting your voice so high that those dogs could hear it? I have not tried, and I'm afraid to. Stacy Luna let her head fall for a second before raising it again. Her horn began to glow purple. Corona, see, you leave me no choice. You'll once more be bound to the heart of the sun. Escape if you can't, but next time, I will be waiting. I will be prepared. Blue transmuted to silver white. Before Stace Luna could release her spell, a voice cut across the scene. Release Queen Corona immediately. I shall pass this best love unto life unto these stones. States of course stood at the edge of the scene, and they held the Tinky's throat. An eye blank, silver light flashed across the stage, and Stace Cora crumpled to the ground, releasing Steve's Tinky to spread across to her sister. But at the same instant, Stace Cora's horn flashed golden. The scene was once more to Ponyville Town Square. Wearing the center of the scene, with the rest of the townsfolk standing in close packed ground around the edges, Stace Luna was giving the speech to the gathered crown. These six ponies dared the wrath of the tyrant's son, risking their lives in order to reach the animus and free me from Corona's imprisonment. Had it not been for their courage, friendship, the question would even now be under the rule of my mad sister. I wish I could give them the reward they truly deserve for such heroism. But it was wisely said that the reward for a job well done is another job. Trixie Do the Moon, Carrot Top, Raindrops, Ditsy Do, Naira Hot Strings, Black Cherry Knee Punch, Neil. The six that went down on her knees, it stays with a flutter of wings to see a jester crowd. Oh, thought the real Trixie. Looks like Double Daz decided to meddle the timeline a bit. If all you going to really thought this so quickly. We might have avoided some of that mess with the night court if we had a formal and defined role. Then again, if things hadn't been so bad, we wouldn't have needed, or dared, to try that sun scheme was the end, and the corruption might still be festering in the court. Well, if you now as my witnesses, said Stace Luna, I declare this, that whosoever wears one of the elements of harmony, if that pony be with it, if they wear, swear to defend Equestria for the enemies both domestic and foreign, if they act for the good of Equestria without compromising the ideas upon which this nation was founded, and they display a care for others, be it to hold of the nation, a city or town, or even a single pony, then let these ponies hereafter be known throughout the Equestria. So he went back at the six mares who kneeled. As not in the realm, let them be awarded all rights and honors that ceasing guarantees them. Let them further be awarded the right of approach. May they forever be stand the good graces of the ponies of Equestria. Dame Raindrops, Dame Ditsy, Dame Keratop, Dame Lyra, Dame Chelly, and Dame Trixie. Rise now as knights of the realm. The four six elements rose, and as though on cue, burst into song. Oh! Now you bring out the opening title! I was, I was wondering where this would show up. Hit it, hit it. My little pony, my little pony, 
Ah, my little pony, I should never let that must to me. My little pony, but you're all here now, I can see. Stormy weather, lost your show, a musical bond. Listen, I ain't here, teaching laughter. It's an easy feat, and magic makes it all complete. You have my little ponies. How did I ever make so many true friends? The six false elements took their bows, and the actors began to come forward for their applause. Because, you know, they love the applause, 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 applause. They love the applause, applause. Ending tonight's episode before we get hit with a copyright suit. Please don't come after us, Miss Gaga!